From the City of Angels, you're listening to the James Salazar Media Podcast. On this week's episode, we're going to talk about everything that's going on in the news. So let me strike the music, and I'll meet you on the other side. I'd like to take this chance to apologize to absolutely nobody. And welcome to the James Salazar Media Podcast, where you get your dose of pop culture, politics, and futurism. How is everyone doing? Hope okay. We got a lot to talk about. A lot to talk about. SpaceX finally did their Starship, Spaceship, whatever you want to call it, flight. Let's take a look how that went. Borrowing some media. That thing is so big. It's like five to six, um, maybe about four starships. I mean, uh, space shuttles on, stacked on top of them. Nothing's been ever been propelled that high, but it exploded. Billions of dollars, I think, or like six hundred million. I mean, let's find out how much. How much did that cost? That must have cost a pretty penny. A pretty penny. Um, let me see. Where will we see that? I read the, the amount of money that costed SpaceX and Elon Musk. Um, where? 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 Space race? Yes, it costed... Sixty-seven million dollars up in smoke, smoking, and then exploded. But if you were watching the feed, it seemed like it didn't bother them at all, and the, the stock went down when it happened. But the stock's already coming kind of lining back up. But Elon Musk, smart. Um, Tempered our expectations. Um, and all his people knew that. That it, to launch something that big, has never been done in history. And they expected it not even to get off the ground. And it did. First major success of the day. Number two, it got to max Q, where the most pressure is on the ship. The most pressure. If it's going to explode because of any um, weakness in the frame, it's going to happen there. It got past max Q. Which is another milestone for something so big. Something so, let's watch it again. So heavy. Never, we've never launched anything close to this. In the air, look Look at that thing. It is just taken off. So what happened was it didn't eject the, uh, the booster. So it started to tailspin and it automatically has its own self-destruct uh, mechanism to ha uh, just in case that happens because it could really fly off and to land and hit some people. So as soon as it starts over water, it starts uh, spinning, it explodes. So they didn't have any control whether that it was built into the system, and the system, once it didn't detach and it started to uh, go out of control, immediately exploded. They didn't do it themselves, nor was the cause of the explosion anything uh, had to do with the frame or anything like that. It just didn't detach. So maybe the heat, the vibration, um, jack something. Who knows what it is? I'm pretty sure they're going to come back and uh, give us more information on how that happened. But to Elon Musk and SpaceX, it was a complete success. So they're optimistic. I'll be optimistic. 
And um, a lot of people in NASA are excited that they got that far to lift something. Because something that big has always been relegated to sci-fi, science fiction, blasting something off that big. And we would always say you could never blast something off that big. It just The gravity well of Earth would just be too much and uh, you couldn't get it off the ground. Well, Elon Musk just proved everybody wrong. And an unsuspected malfunction happened. So... It's a good thing the F, 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 the um, FDA, it's the FDA. I think this meant FDA. <laughs> the F F FDA. No, yes, the FFA, the Flight Administration. Got it. FDA. I'm getting them all mixed. All these names. I digress. So they got to look at it. Give them the next go ahead. We're looking about three months for the next one. And I assume they're going to want to have the separation. And um, have it go out in space. The other one, the, the, the big booster to land on ground. Upright to be reused because that's the key. Reusable rockets make it financially feasible. And um, then have it come back to orbit and belly flop into the water. I don't know if they if they are going to have it want to land. Now, the rockets, some of the rockets didn't fire. About six of them didn't fire. And they wanted all, all of them to fire. So they got to figure that out too. But they had more than enough to get it off the ground. So, we'll see what happens with SpaceX and make sure that Elon Musk doesn't get into any other controversy or buy another media company and we'll stay on track. Tucker Carlson was, uh, was, is the, was the main or the most watched cable news personality got fired. This happened uh, about three weeks ago, and uh, it was a shock to everybody, especially him. And a couple other people have been fired, uh, Dan Bongino, and it seems like Fox is stepping away from center-right to more center. We don't know if they're going to go more progressive, but I think they're... Because there's a couple theories about this. Number one, cable news right now is a dying industry. And Fox News and Tucker Carlson are at, are at the heights of it right now. So you don't ever want to sell when you're at the lowest. You want to sell at the highest to get the most money and the Ruperts or whatever the, these people, the Murdochs, they know that it can only go down from here. So sell high, buy low, right? That's pretty much uh, investment number one. So Tucker Carlson has a lot of Frivolous lawsuits, and that would be hard to sell because they're going to be suing Fox News. Also, the media, the legacy media, the left-leaning media, which is so many of them compared to Fox and a very few, um, would love to buy Fox News and make it left. So they might be already moving towards that type of moderate to left, to extreme left, who knows, and off and get somebody who will find it a win to buy Fox News and then control the content. Because 
The people who own it, what do they care? They think it's a dying media. It is a dying media because we get our news from Twitter, Facebook. I know I get most of mine from Facebook, um, Instagram, YouTube, and a lot of people feel educated because of shorts. And um, maybe some of that stuff keeps us from knowing what's really going on in the world. But nonetheless, that is the medium where people are fed edu uh, and educated about what's going on in the world today in their local market, in, in their state, and in their, the federal, to the, to the rest of the world. And the writing's on the wall. People are getting fired. And... They're looking for some ambitious people to think they can make a lot of money off of Fox News because Fox News is a lot of money. Within five years, if everything stays the same, within five years, they're going to make their money back and then rake in the cash like they have. But the people who own it feel it's going to go down from here. So... We saw Tucker Carlson respond to it about a, a week later. And that was so much watched, it dwarfed his own TV show. He had about 3 million people watching a night at the minimum. Now the ratings have dropped extremely for that time slot. And which speaks of Tucker Carlson's uh, value. So what's going to happen? Immediately he was fielding um, offers that paid him three times as much as uh, Fox did. But I think he's going to go the Ben Shapiro route. I think he's going to go to uh, like the Blaze, um, Bill O'Reilly. Have your own net, uh, network where you're the flagship, and hire other talent uh, in it and have a like a subscription service, which for Glenn Beck, uh, Ben Shapiro, Bill O'Reilly, has made them millions, millions. It's like $9 a month, and they have about 1 million to 2 million Follower, uh, who, people who buy that, and they get all the special content. I mean, two million at nine dollars a month. That's a lot of money. What's the math on that? Let's take a look at the math on that math. I like the math. So we got nine dollars times two. million is eighteen million times twelve that is two hundred and sixteen million dollars a, a year and that's why Ben Shapiro is able to make movies so in Tucker Carlson is the most famous out of all of them right now. So if Ben Shapiro is putting like two million, I think I would say five million for about the same amount of nine times five million. Boom, forty-five million dollars a month times twelve months. That is a half a billion. A year. You can hire the best talent. And you can come up with a phenomenal service. I mean, what does he really need to live on? Like 20 million? Come on. Of course, the government always takes their blood. Joe Biden went to the correspondent's dinner. And it was lackluster. And it really shows how the Democrats... And Republicans, they all seem like just one elite group of people. But Joe Biden said something that was mocking the reporters there. 
he said, uh, it's like uh, his first years in office. He comes in, says something, walks off without anybody asking him real questions. That's what his statement was, and it was mocking them that they don't ask him real questions or any questions at all. They let him get away with it. The media, it is so in the pocket of these politicians and corporations. Even Tucker Carlson, in his speech one week later, this little post he made, he talked about how corporations and the politicians are keeping real stories away from the American people. You cannot trust the media to tell you the truth. Or you can trust the media to only tell you a portion of the truth. They're going to tell you what they're, they're going to tell you what they think is important that you know. But there's a lot of things going on in this world that is frightening. And that the American people, if they knew, might react much differently. The media, I'm sorry, for the lack of a better word, controls the minds of the uneducated. They constantly get them to think about race. Look at colors. That's the biggest issue in America. And it's just not. Biggest issues for America is what's happening in the world. There's mass starvation. There's mass murder. There's wars going on. There is mass protest. And Americans can are so easily distracted. And the you can't trust the media to fully educate you. In fact... You can trust the media to misinform you. So you're going to have to take a personal responsibility on yourself to find that information. Because we are a free society. And we want stuff fed to us. But if you feed yourself, which is an easy thing to do, if you can feed yourself, you can be educated. The information is out there. It is. You can find out what's happening in Brazil. You can find out what's happening in the Middle East. You can find out what's happening in Europe. You can. It's out there. It's in there. You just got to type it in. But if you're someone who wants someone to shove food down your mouth, it's going to be opinionated. And it's going to be what they think is important. So there's got to be a level of responsibility for you. Yes, you. To get educated on things that the media right now are just not going to tell you. The sin of omission, not telling you the truth, is just as bad as a lie. So, that's what I have to say about that. But, um, this election cycle, it's going to be crazy. And here's the thing. No one believes that Joe Biden is in charge. We know that there's a group of people who are propping him up. And um, he's saying what they want to say. Um, woke and left-wing agendas are being spewed out of his mouth. Who knows if he really believes that or not. But they're telling him he can barely get himself out of a room. Truly. If he gets on stage, there's a 50%, there's like a 75% chance that he's going to look lost and walk out the wrong door. I mean, remember when George Bush uh, went to the door and he uh, tried to pull it and it was locked because someone told him to go that way? That literally happens to the president every time he talks. And they make so much fun of uh, George Bush for that. They constantly replayed it and replayed it and replayed it. Here's a guy who does it like 
every time he comes out in public and we're supposed to be, oh, yeah, he's good. It's fine. It's incredible. It's incredible. America's not in a good place when it comes to our leadership. It doesn't. And the trust that people have for government is just astonishing. I just don't know where it comes from when they keep on failing us at every turn, especially with this current president. It's disconcerting at the most. But he has a 50% chance of winning the election as long as Donald Trump is running. You see, any Republican except for Donald Trump can beat this guy handily. He is such a bad uh, leader. Uh, the, how he deals with the rest of the world, how he deals with the economy, how he deals with uh, I uh, social issues, and um, the list can go on. Any Republican can come in and just grill him on just simple stuff and um, win, but not if. You, but but Donald Trump is the leader. He has a fifty percent chance of winning. How good the economy about one week before the election? How good the economy is? And um, if Donald Trump says something stupid, which very much can happen, determines who's going to win. Who's going to win the election? If the economy is really bad and Donald Trump says something stupid, it's 50-50 chance. If the economy is really bad and Donald Trump is smart, not acting like a victim and not saying stupid shit, it's probably a 60% chance he'll, he'll win because the economy is that bad. Things are that bad. It is so bad that they're going to get that person and bring him back. Donald Trump was fired as president because of his personality. Don't fool yourself. It's because of how he, how he comes off and his personality. But a lot of people have buyer's remorse based upon losing income and inflation. People are like, okay, it's just, it's, it is simple as this. You have a, a, a boss who pays you very well, but he's constantly screwing his own business and you guys are losing money every single day. But he is the sweetest guy in the world. Nicest guy. He's like grandpa, right? Or you have a jerk, but you're able to maintain your income. You feel good about the business and your prospects look good for making more income and commission. Well, my friends, if it was your business, if you was you working for that person, you would get over that they were mean and rude and condescending. You would get over it because as long as you get that paycheck, as long as you get that bonus, as long as you get high commissions and he's running the company successfully, you would get over it. You would get over it. Well, we are faced with that decision. A very nice guy, but I don't know how nice he is anymore. Or the, the, the jerk, but the jerk will run the country better. On paper, Donald Trump ran the country way better than Joe Biden. Joe Biden is a disaster, but he seems like a nice guy. And he kowtows to people. He seems like a nice guy, but on paper, he is a disaster on all fronts. Who knows what's going to happen? I don't know. I don't know. So let me get into some reviews on some TV shows. Review some TV shows. Get this guy. Get out, get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. So, third season and final season of Picard. It is all over. There might be some uh, spins off, and hopefully they do because I would watch it. So the first one, I mean, they got Picard and they pretty much dealt with every issue, every issue 
not every issue, but pretty much every issue uh, that was lingering after the TV show and the movies. So we know that Data died in Nemesis, and it was it was something that it was no goodbye. It just happened suddenly with a quick death, and Picard and everybody didn't know how to deal with it. Later on, Picard's life, we see that this is the issue in season one. We wrap up that issue. And then, as you know, in season two, um, it still has to do with Data again, but his offspring, and based on his technology. And, but really, Q. Now, Q was the um, first episode of The Next Generation. He was the main issue, and he, and he becomes an issue all through the seven seasons of the TV show. He wasn't addressing it in the movies. But that humanity being on trial through Jean-Luc Picard, Captain, and the test that Q made him go through, that was never addressed in the movies or at the end. It was at the very end. Last show was about Q. And everybody figured that. But they wanted to tie that story off, so they did. And Q, spoiler alerts in the second season, he's dying. He's been alive for millions of years. He's a pretty much godlike character, but not God. He's, they, they work, they evolved into this position. So they're uh, pretty much all of the boundaries that space has. They're above it. But at this moment in time, he's going to die. This omnipotent, omnipresent, omnipotent being. So they address that in the second season. The third season, they address all the conflicts and what everybody's doing that were on, who were the command level, and all the people who had... Jean-Luc Picard had a personal relationship and we tied all those storylines up. What was happening? And everybody had a little conflict in their life that they were dealing with and it gets addressed in the season. The third season is the best. It was a be- it was a very good I don't want to spoil anything, but the bad people were good. The overall issue was good. The acting was good. All the old actors in the same TV show, they all stepped up. Except for Wesley Crusher. I I felt the missing of Wesley Crusher. I felt there could have been certain scenes where he could have came in and made a difference. It is what it is. But there is an issue with Jean-Luc Picard. Here comes a spoiler, just to get you um, caught up on what I'm saying. In, in one, two, three, Jean-Luc Picard has a son he doesn't know about, and that's the catalyst for this whole adventure. And it was amazing. It was the best season. It was good to see all of them together, and it gets a... Four and a half potatoes. The highest it would be five. It is the best season. But I feel it would have been five if Wesley Crusher was able to come in. And I have certain moments where I, he could. And now maybe I'll explain that in another one. I don't want to spoil it for everybody. So Picard, season three, gets four and a half potatoes. Maybe four. Point seven five, very close, very close to five, but not quite there. It, it was really good, and there could be a, a spinoff that looks that is very exciting, and could show where other people at on a different show. It could piggyback, which would be great if we can see what's going on with Voyager 
and D Space Nine and all these characters, if we can address those things, these old TV shows, that would be amazing. These old characters and what they're dealing with. And always, Worf is always the catalyst for all of them, except for Voyager. But, yeah, the connection to, yeah, you have to watch it. It's really good. We're hoping uh, that would happen. And there you go. I, saw, I don't want to say any more about it. Don't want to say any more about it, but I liked it. So, yeah. The Ark. This is a show by uh, Sci-Fi Channel. It was really good. I enjoyed it. It gets four and a half potatoes. I was invested every time. New actors, pretty much new actors. There's some people who are in some things, but they're not big actors. They, it was very good. But here's the thing you need to know. You see, and I'm going to explain it. It's spoilers in one, two, three. I didn't mean to flip you off. I really didn't. They use the same old trope that we destroyed our planet. We find out we found an Earth-like planet, and now we're heading towards there, and we're in hyperspace, and hyper and hyper sleep. It's gonna take us a while. Well, a disaster comes, and kills all the command crew, kills everybody on the upper level, upper level of things, and people who were would never be touched command level decisions are now in charge. And they're trying to get to this Earth-type planet. As long as you know that they never get there, that the show is about the problem of the week dealing with this bad situation where a meteor storm kills all the command levels and pretty much jack up the ship. Every show they're dealing with a new subject. That's the show. There's a problem, they fix the problem, there's a problem, they fix the problem, and it, it's and it's good. So because this problem happens, it leads to this problem that happens in the next show. And because of that problem, this happens. And because of that problem, this happens. It doesn't come out of nowhere. It's cause and effect. And they're just dealing with these things in clever ways. It's, it's clever writing. And, you know, the, the characters are finding their... Uh, the ground and the actors uh, are finding who they are in in this show, and you gotta leave. I mean, it's not as bad as the first uh, season of Generations, and they, they they were overacting and very campy, but and you see some of that here. But the characters are are being fleshed out really quickly, and um, yeah, as long as you know, they're probably not gonna get to. If they are lucky to go five seasons, they're not going to get to that planet probably in the third season. <laughs> or if it's a seven-year arc, they're not going to get to the fifth season probably. There's going to be many seasons where they're just constantly fielding these problems. If you know that is the issue and every week they got a new problem, you will enjoy the show. I believe you'll enjoy the show. If you're like, when are they going to get to the planet? Uh, you're not going to enjoy the show because they're not going to get to the planet. For a long while, they're going to constantly be fielding uh, conspiracy. There's conspiracies, uh, tension by who's in charge, all these things. You're, they're going to be filled and sabotage and other things are happening. That It's a good story. So as long as you know they're just fielding problems all the time, you'll enjoy the show. But I give it four and a half stars. I say watch the arc. You give it time to get past um, and yeah, I don't know what I did with, I, I had a man, did I have, where's the Mandalorian? No, I don't have them, I thought I had it here, so, so whatever. Let's go, hold on, boom. So what happens when you don't do the James Sutherland media every week, you do it every two weeks. So let me just do this real quick, cause I got an overlay. This is a program called Ecamm Live where I can record and I have all these overlays right here. And, um, no, what are we doing? Just freeze it up on me. Dang it, whatever. The Mandalorian.
The Mandalorian. Boom. Just like that. The Mandalorian. Seems like the, the third and final season. So Almost like the card. So people think it's called the, Gro the Grogu <laughs> show. It's not the Grogu show. It's called The Mandalorian. And um, people want this to be about Grogu becoming a better Jedi or becoming a Mandalorian himself. But this is about the Mandalorian, uh, Din Djarin, and we see in the in the last two seasons, it's about Mandalore. They're Mandalorians and their planet. So if you're going to end the show, it just makes sense. And here's a spoiler. In one, two, three. Of course, they get back to their planet. That's how you would write off the story. That they, Mandalore gets taken over by Mandalorians again. It was destroyed by the Empire. And they made their way back. So, a lot of people seem to be upset that the story arc was uh, Grogu wasn't fleshed out enough where we saw him be proficient in the Force or as a Mandalorian. But he, he was okay. I mean, he, Grogu has superpowers. He's one of the strongest Jedi even at, well, his species age very close, very slowly. So he's 50 years old about, but um, they learn slowly over time, but they are very powerful in the force. And we see that in, at specific times, but we expect Yoda, baby Yoda to do more stuff and they didn't. It's still about Mandalore and the Mandalorians. And at the end, Spoiler, they get their planet back. They take their planet back. And they're a, a very strong species. They're very hard to defeat. And um, the, the Empire knew they had to destroy their planet to conquer the rest of the uh, galaxy. And they did that. But they didn't do it good enough. So it's a bad thing for the remnants of the Empire that the Mandalorians reinstated their home world and have them all come back in one place. So who knows what that's going to happen. We have the next TV show, Ahsoka. Um, might go into a little bit more into Luke Skywalker and maybe Baby Yoda. They might be guest stars in it. And Din Djarin might not just end, but I think the way they ended it off, that um, there was no cliffhanger or some major event other, that had to do with uh, Din Djarin alone. So it seems like the end. I don't know if they got approved for a fourth season, but I give it four stars. Overall, I enjoyed the series. It started off amazing. Um, the first show was the best show. That one gets like five stars. It gave us a lot of hope for what the Star Wars universe was going to be. And yeah. So for the series, it gets four stars. For the last season, it gets four stars. It was exciting. And the only the first season gets five stars. Some crazy dude walked by my house yelling out. Sheesh. It's like, what the hell? Don't be yelling at nobody. He was yelling at nobody. Whoever nobody is. So, my friends, this is going to end it. It's a little bit of a erratic James Salazar Media podcast. Um, we need to do a... Something to... Headline from the world of futurism. That needs to happen. Hey, if you need me to come speak at one of your organizations, if you need some life coaching, if you need to follow me on, on other platforms, uh, social media platforms, go to this QR code, take a picture of that, and it will link you to everything I am doing.
and everything I have. Also, let's do this really quick. I'm going to give you the... This will be into the show notes. In the show notes, media dot com slash you see here James Sullivan's our media what the hell whoa 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 right there dot com slash link this will be in the show notes of this show that will link you to everything I'm doing that will link you to everything I'm doing. You will be get to see um, some things I'm affiliated with. Um, some of the services I have and the social media platforms I'm on. So go there to learn more about me. Hey, if the storms of life come against you and you find yourself on your knees, say, stand up and say what my sensei Jack Burton always says. Give me your best shot. Strike the music. Take a look at that sermon and say, stand up and say, what my, san- what my sensei Jack Burrow always says, give me your best shot, right? That's how it goes. Man. Wait a minute, hold on. See you later, all. See you later.